Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not To Comic Book. This week is short talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Gen V Season 1, Episode 5. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, th this episode dropped a lot of bombs on us, and um, we're going to try and break everything down. My brain's going to be a little scattered and all over the place, but I'm going to try and keep this as, like, on par as possible but you know i'm me i'm mr all over the place so do bear in mind with me but first and foremost since i got this in the forefront of my mind what i thought was so interesting is cardosa and and Dara are having this conversation because he wants nothing to do with sam it's like yes yeah, sam tried to kill my entire family tried to kill me i'm done but it's like yeah you can't really go anywhere considering like hey you've experimented on soups like can't really put that on your linkedin or anything can you like what what other job are you gonna have what I thought was interesting is because of her abilities, Cardosa wants to use Marie because for him it's about her having such a rare ability and it's like, oh, you expedite my re research. But what I thought was so interesting is Indira was like, yes, yeah, she is rare, but no, she has a benefactor, which took me back because it's like, right. So ever since episode two, Indira's had her, she sunk her claws into Marie. But for her to say that specific line, now, I don't think that's a, oh, I'm keeping Marie for myself. Maybe, but it felt more like a, that felt real, that she's like, oh, so everything Indira is doing isn't just for herself. She's doing it on behalf of someone else. Someone else is pulling the strings. But then the question is, who? Because, like, when it comes to this school, like, she's at the top. I mean, there's the other trustees, but there might be someone else behind the, behind the scenes. Because the only face to the whole Woods thing that we're aware of is, um is um oh god uh brink he's the only one that we really have to face of and obviously we know the trustees are aware of it we know that vaught's aware of it but we don't know who's like really at the top like who is indira potentially answering to and who is this benefactor that is taking such an interest in marie part of me also wonders are we going to find out the person who's taking an interest in marie could it actually end up being uh, could it be the same person who ended up adopting her sister? Now, that's something to kind of think about. But now I'm also thinking, well, who's someone else in the universe of the boys that might have taken an interest in Marie? And immediately my brain's like, you don't think this has something to do with Victoria, do, do you? I don't know. Because once again, this is in the universe and it's, it is obviously all connected to Vaughn, but it's still separate enough. But Because that's been the big question everyone has is like, will this ultimately connect into uh, the boys, like, obviously, this is acting as, like, a season 3.5, but, you know, will season 4 of the boys reference Gen V, like, they'll, they'll be separate entities enough, but they bleed over in the fact this is all taking place in the same universe, right, so I'm, I'm so curious to find out what that's about, and also what the woods is about, because the way they made it sound like, right, this is about learning how to control supers, so, because they also made the point of Sam is way stronger than even Golden Boy was. So I'm like, okay, so is this kind of like, well, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, because we have not heard from Edgar since he got ousted uh, from Vought in episode four of last season of The Boys. So we, have, we haven't heard from him. So it might not even be Victoria, not less is Edgar making some moves or something like that. Like, not less he ends up being a benefactor because Victoria was kind of his secret weapon. So not less he's trying to like, get her in, in in that same capacity i i, I don't know I, I don't know if because like i said we have not heard from him since that episode i mean yes he popped up in later episodes but those were in correlation to like um a flashback with noir in episode seven of last season so you know that's as far as we got on on that edgar front but present day we haven't seen edgar since episode four of last season when he was ousted um, and we don't really even know where that fully stands in the aftermath of everything. Um, so that, that's, that's on my mind, but, but kind of correlated to that, what I was bringing up about like, right, they're trying to control soups. It's like, has soups become this epidemic that has become so widespread? I mean, cause to be fair, like everyone that, that's at this school right now, they were all born, like, let's say they're 18, 19, 20, something, something along those lines, Right. So if they are along those same lines, does that mean that, does that mean like, I mean, that means like they're, they're a certain batch of, you know, these, 
is there still an ongoing batch of kids being born today with Compound V? Like, obviously, the news about Compound V has been in the news for the past couple of years now. So the question then begs, like, if that's still going on, like, are we going to find out that Gen V, this this generation of Marie, Kate, Andre, Jordan, Sam, and um, Emma, they're the last generation of like kids getting pumped with V as children. Well, can't be the case because you you always think back to the baby uh, that um, that Butcher used in season one that was a suit. Like, but once again, that was pre... So there's still at least one more generation that was born with V in their system. So there's... you know, But like, who knows, like, if there's been any sits then since news broke about compound V in, v in season two. So that's why I'm like, yeah, but like I said, it's such a widespread epidemic that soups are everywhere. It's it's hard to rein them back in. Once again, Vought's supposed to be a pharmaceutical company, not the super, not in the superhero business. But maybe it's like, right, we have too many powerful soups like Homelander running amok. We need to be able to like, we as humans need to be able to rein them in and you know, drag them back in so they're not running amok like like I keep using the epidemic that they are. So I'm wondering, is that like the true purpose of the woods? So that's why you'd almost think whoever is like at the tippity top of the woods would have to be someone who's human wanting to rein heroes in. Once again, I can only assume it'd be Edgar, but that's just my assumption on just what the conversation having because it's like, it does seem like they're trying to understand, cut open soups and understand them, understand how they work so you can rein them in because too many have like got free will and too much damage has been done in the world so it's like we need to we need to rein these crazy sobs down because if you can rein a lot of soups in it probably get you a step closer to being able to rein homelander in because he's too much of a threat to just leave out he's too unpredictable he's too out of his effing mind so that that's just a lot that obviously i spend a lot of time on that but i think that that's where my mindset is currently with all of that so we'll ultimately have to wait to see if that ends up being the case but uh, getting back to our characters, we're picking up in the aftermath of each and every one of our characters has no memory of what happened. Like Jordan and Marie wake up next to each other. Obviously, so does Kate and Andre. And they end up at a party and they run into Maverick, which I'm going to go ahead and talk about this with Maverick. I feel so stupid because later on, like he's talking to Jordan and it's like, yeah, like sometimes I go in the men's uh, watch the, the girls. Uh, I jerk off while I watch the girls uh, in the girls' locker room or whatever, and then I do the same thing in the men's locker room because, like, gender's a construct. And Jordan's like, dude, he's like, yo, yo, no kink shaming. I was like, why is every invisible, f weird, every weird, uh, every invisible person in this universe a weirdo? To be fair, that's the sad thing of, like, when you're, like, a teenager or whatever, you think, like, oh, that'd be hot being able to have invisibility because that's the thing. Invisibility will be used for the most effed up creepy reasons there's no like oh you can't like use like stone's going to go too far with that ability right either way that's my point of like oh that's just kind of human nature that like that per perverts with that ability is kind of an issue but i was like yeah we know one pervert that did the exact same thing translucent and then i stopped myself i was like his name, the character's name is Maverick. I was like, I'm so stupid. That's Translucent Sun. The only reason why I know that, I would have never clicked that. I literally watched something related to, because the last time Maverick was referenced was season two's premiere of The Boys, because at Translucent's like public funeral where Homelander's giving his speech and um, uh, Starlight's singing, they make reference to Maverick. I was like, I felt so stupid. I was like, oh my God, that's his son. Oh my, I was like, of course, of course. Dude, he's got his dad's proclivities. His dad, the exact same way. I was like, oh my God. Like I said, I would have never pieced that together. I would have never remembered that detail. Oh, I felt so stupid when I was like, Maverick, how did I, I would have never, like I said, if, if it wasn't for like having that generally in my, the general zeitgeist of my mind more recently, I would have never pieced that together. This also, that, this episode also makes me think like, maybe that's also why the timeline seems so weird because of certain things that come up, what we'll get to later about like, why the years don't match up necessarily. It's like, well, there might be reasonings for why things are kind of a little wacky there but either way that's that which we also find out his kink isn't just like like 
being invisible and watching people change in the locker room and jerking off to it. It's also like for whatever was like he's tied to like an alpaca named Sloan. Like is Sloan an actual alpaca or is that someone shape shifting into an alpaca? Like does, is there like someone who can turn into animals? I, I don't I don't know if that's what that is or not. There was also a shapeshifter at the school. I forgot what his name was, but they run into him at one point in time. And I'm like, are you like Doppelganger's kid? Are you related to Doppelganger? Because someone, I forgot what I was watching where someone had kind of made the point that like, there are a certain number of abilities in this universe and there's like modifications, there's alterations to them. Like it all, there's like a centerfold of like, yeah, these are the basic abilities and there's like permutations of those in and a branches from those that are extensions of each other to some extent. Because it's like, there's so many, like, overlap between so many abilities and stuff like that. Like, the fact is that, oh, Butcher would ultimately end up getting powers similar to Homelander. His main thing was, like, right, the heat vision and the superhuman strength. So, that whole old deal, right? I mean, even Homelander got his superhuman strength from his dad. And he ended up even being stronger than Superboy. Not Superboy, Soldier Boy, Jesus. I was conflating Golden Boy and uh, Soldier Boy in that regard. Which I feel like they're probably trying to aim for a little bit of a dynamic in that regard. I mean, that's father-son, but I was bringing up, like, Golden Boy and Sam because, like, Sam is stronger than Golden Boy, even, you know? And it, I don't know. Someone had thrown out a theory that maybe, like, Sam is actually, like, another um, person made from Soldier Boy's seed... Who knows? We're not going to get into that right now because I I, I, I I haven't really fl like flushed that out too much in my head. But either way, um, it just like the fact is we're running to so many other people with the same powers. Like I said, the other person who can shapeshift like doppelganger. So I just thought that was interesting. Um, because their ability doesn't, because I mean, like, because like, it's almost like comparing like termites' abilities to Emma's. His shrinking is not the same thing as Emma's. Like, like I said, there's permutations. So the person who shape shifted, their situation wasn't like, because ter, um, because uh, doppelganger's whole thing was like, right, you saw the restructuring of the entire body. But this person, like, they like quickly legit, like, sh like almost like the shake of a head, they were able to like turn back. So, like I said, these. Powers aren't one to ones from person to person. They're permutations of it's a similar ability, but it manifests differently in people. Once again, the conversation of do the powers influence the ability, or do the abilities influence the power? Once again, chicken or egg situation in that regard probably kind of goes a little both ways. But either way, getting back to it, like I said, no one remembers what's going on, and they also find we don't know how much time they're missing. But Jordan kind of puts it in like, we're missing a couple dates. It's like, no, it's Saturday. It's like, well, they assumed it was Friday because they were partying. There's videos online. Jordan and Marie, like, hardcore making out. Um, there's also Emma, giant Emma, like, flashing her boobs in her ass. And it's like, huh. Which, now she's got notoriety. Because I think she feels a lot better about that than... Because being small comes with the connotation of, well, we know that she throws up to get small, so being popular as fun with cricket, like, it probably, like, rubs her the wrong way, because I'm sure a lot of that permeates from her mom, so, but being big is something her mom kind of banned her from doing, so it makes her feel like she's kind of taking back herself along with her powers, because I think so much of her power stems from her mom, because she even said it in episode three, her mom's the one that taught her how to throw up, and that ends up being a chicken or the egg type of thing of, was her mom making her do that before she knew she had powers, or was it like, oh, she found out about Emma's powers and then taught her how to do it? I could definitely see like, it's like, oh no, you made her do it beforehand because that's how you that's how you make it in this world. You're going to be young and pretty and her mom's probably living vicariously through her. So she wanted her to like, oh, kind of gave her like an, an eating disorder. But then I also found out, oh, it all it's also connected to your powers. Like I said, I'm curious like if Emma's circumstances, like could she ultimately work like... Uh, termite where she could grow and shrink whenever she wants to but the problem is that it's it's a it's a, a purely mental thing that once she's able to get over that hump she'll be able to have a lot better control over it or is it going to be a thing of and i, I had brought this up previously or is it going to be a thing she's always going to have her her um whether she's overeating or throwing up will always be the the uh controlling x factor in her 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 shrinking or growing abilities so that's a whole thing. But either way. So we weren't sure how much they... Because obviously it was enough that... What was it? Marie was like... 
yeah, I went to Rufus, and it's like, I don't remember why I went to Rufus. Because they, they immediately were like, right, if we can't remember anything, it's because of Rufus. Like, why would... Uh, well, that was after the fact, because they ran into Sam, but neither Emma nor Marie recognized him. I was like, dude, I was like, no! I was like, that sucks. Especially because of what, uh, what Sam was so worried about. He was like, you're going to end up leaving me like everybody else. But Emma was like, no, they bonded. They grew so attached. They, they like each other. They grew attached to each other very deeply in episode three and four. I think it was the first meaningful connections that they really had outside of their family circumstances. Like all Sam ever had was Luke and all Emma's ever really had is her mom. So I think for them, they found a special, I mean, you know, obviously like she's got a friend like Marie is who she's really attached to, but like the connect with another person and like them like that especially because Emma has a lot of self-esteem issues and uh Sam has a lot of issues in his own right like you know mentally and stuff so I think they kind of were able to kind of see the like look past the surface and see them each other like it's like being able to be seen for the first time through someone else's eyes like that is that is something that is irreplaceable you know, being able to kind of be truly, truly feel like you're being seen by someone, that is that that is a beautiful feeling. And I, I think they found that in each other. So and for her to not remember, but for him, it's like, no, no, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to make you get so that you can remember because she's the first person he's really connected to. And he doesn't want to lose that because he likes her, you know. So that's such a shame because now Sam and that's and I think that speaks volumes. Sam is the only one that isn't affected by it. Because someone else had thrown out this theory, like, wondering whether... I forgot who I was listening to. Someone had thrown out a theory they were wondering whether or not Kate would be able to push Homelander. I'm jumping the gun a little bit. But, like... So, part of me wonders, is that why Sam's memory is still intact? Because maybe he's so strong? It might even be, like... We might even be dealing with, like, a Legion situation here where, like, his mind is so scattered that it's hard to, like, because his mind isn't, like, allocated. It's not just focused. Because his mind is literally fractured, it makes it impossible to kind of wipe his memory fully. So that's why part of me wonders, like, could that be, is that why Sam, or is it just that Sam's so strong? Because, like, maybe Homelander's so physically strong, he can't have his, he wouldn't be able to be pushed by Kate. But what if, um... But the same thing's applicable with Sam, but like I said, maybe it could just also be his mind is so fractured that even Kate's ability would work on him, you know? It's just interesting, like, the only person at that house who didn't get pushed is Sam. Everyone else is missing memories about everything, the woods and all that. He now knows, like, oh, my brother's dead. Like, you know, he knows his brother's dead. He remembers Emma. So it's like, right, all his memories are still intact. So why? You could literally wipe everyone else at that house. So why not Sam? So it's either, hey, he's too strong or his mind is too fractured to do it. So that's interesting. And like I said, it, that could be indicative of whether or not that power could even work on a homelander so it's interesting too because like she has that ability to kind of be able to control people and then you also have like well there's the rufus of it all but then there's also this whole uh, thing with cardoso trying to control soup so there's so many threads tied together in that in that um weave of it all but because now it makes you question everything in this episode where it's like Kate that told that story of Rufus. I was like, yo, he is a fucking predator and no one's done anything about that? But even Kate was like, yo, I he showed me a video of me consenting. I was like, because I was about to say, like, I would have thought, like, yo, Luke would have beat the ever-living shit out of him if that was the case. So now in retrospect, jumping ahead a little bit, I'm like, I wonder was that even true? Probably not. That was probably like Kate just like trying to get this um get um them off her trail. Because everyone assumed it was Rufus because he's the one that kind of roofs you and messes with your head. So they're like, right, it's got to be him. Everyone kind of jumped on that to the point Andre went to confront Rufus, but then kind of got whammy and ended up in front of like, a, he ended up at like a fast food place getting food. It's like, crap, the bastard got me. So it's like, how do you tackle that? Because if you get too close to him, his pheromones activate. So it isn't a thing of like, so he, so it does seem like he isn't. A, because that was a debate too. I heard, I I, uh, I heard that conversation too about like whether or not uh, Rufus actually is a psychic. It's like no, it's BS. He's able to read people enough to draw them in and use his pheromones. Not unless he really is a psychic. On top of that too, because obviously once again there's layers to 
a lot of these powers. But usually, like, if you have a power like that, like the pheromone power would just be your power. You wouldn't get something like on top of it too. Not not necessarily. Once again, aside from like some base level superhuman strength or like um, superhuman speed or agility, so on and so forth, right? I felt so bad with the whole Marie and Jordan of it all because they both are like into each other. And sadly, um, I could tell what was going on the moment Jordan was like, because Marie's like, oh, so about, and Jordan was like, no, we're, we're cool. You don't have to say or feel anything. And it's like, oh, okay. You could tell it bothered Marie. But even Emma was like, yeah, maybe Jordan said all that, that you were cool because that's not how they really feel. They just assume that's how you felt. Because, and I, once again, I get Jordan. Like, I'm not in Jordan's exact circumstance, but I know that feeling of a, as a teenager, I, I'd still do it as an adult. It's a, it's a, it's a defense mechanism where it's kind of like, Oh yeah, like I'm gonna assume the worst and kind of like put up a barrier because I'm I'm scared of being hurt. So it's like, right, I don't want you to feel like pressured or anything because Jordan actually does like Marie and Marie likes Jordan. But Jordan's like, well, we're cool. We don't have to talk about it because Jordan's kind of scared of like how Marie's gonna feel about it. Cause Marie like woke because in Jordan's mind, it's like, yo, when Marie woke up next to me, like I was in my girl form. I was a girl and I thought that probably freaked her out. Because the first girlfriend Jordan ever had wanted her wanted them to stay as a boy all the time it's like she and she, and and once again of course you're going to have esteem issues about that considering like that's literally stems from your dad being like yo you could be a boy all the time it's like but this is me being a boy and a girl that's me but you can't accept that and now jordan's scared that's what jordan's scared of just not being accepted for being themselves but Marie doesn't get caught up in that. Because I was watching someone who uh, had made a point like, oh, why did they, they even thought it was interesting that Jordan, before they started making up with Marie, they didn't stay girl Jordan. They became boy Jordan, in fact. And now you find out that's that's a that's like a psychological issue for Jordan, where it's like, I just assume that's what Marie wanted. I didn't ask her if that's what she wanted but i just assume because it's it's associated with some like pain and trauma of like oh cool i had a girlfriend who was just like just be a boy all the time like why do you even have to be a girl it's like oh dude it's like but because it's like jordan's afraid of like yeah if you you have to accept both sides of me because i thought that was interesting a, a little side note about jordan too when jordan was talking to andre was like i never like lose this much of my memory it's like even if i took a bean to the head or whatever so part of me was wondering is that supposed to be in correlation of when jordan is there switching between genders like is that I mean, I'm assuming it's the same body. You're just changing genders. But I was wondering, like, does that help with memory or whatever? Because I was thinking, like, yeah, if one, like, blacks out, would the other one remember? I would assume not because it's not separate personalities. It's not like a, speaking of Legion, it's not like a Legion situation where it's, like, multiple personalities. Um, it's just you're switching genders. But maybe it's just, like, supposed to be like, nah, Jordan's just got that thick of a tolerance where it's like, I don't black out and lose my memories like that. Despite, like, how much... Drugs or alcohol is in my system. Like I said, it's just interesting that like Jordan also had this heart to heart moment with who else but Maverick because Maverick was like, yeah, maybe that's not on Marie, that's on you. That's your like, that's your sexual hang up, your personal hang up. And it's like, wow, you really think so? And it's like, yeah, it's like that. Like I said, it's just these little details. Like that is such a small detail. Even I was like, oh, thought that was interesting, but I thought that was just. I felt that was just like Jordan being like, oh, I figured this might be what you want because I don't know where you stand sexually. Because um, even Andre was like, no, it was, uh, no, Emma was asking, um, asking uh, Marie like, oh, what's tighter, uh, men asshole or women asshole? And it's like, Jesus, Emma. It's like, she's the most sexual. I mean, they're all sexually charged, but it's like, yo, Emma's the like courtiest of the group. Um, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on, like I said, I knew I was going to do this. I'm on so many different points right now. I'm sorry. I, I'll rein it back in and finish up my point with the whole Jordan of it all, but kind of wrapping that up. I just, I just thought that was, like I said, just that little detail of like, oh, I thought Jordan did that on purpose of like turning into a guy because like, you don't know where Marie stands sexually. So you're like, oh, maybe she won't accept the girl version of me. So I'll make it easier and just be the guy version of me. Which, once again, in retrospect, it makes a lot of sense because it's like, right, your your dad wants you to be a boy all the time. So you're kind of feeling like any, 
especially girl that's with you, might prefer that. And because I, it might be that thing that Jordan feels like that with other people as well. Because someone else had pointed out the person that Jordan was sleeping with in like episode three, you know, they were banging it out in uh, Jordan's room. Like Jordan was using their male voice, but the dude was didn't get didn't worry about it too much. Like either that's just kind of like uh, who cares? Because once again, they had brought up the co- there's a conversation of like there's so much like sexual fluidity at like college. I mean, it is the time to experiment and stuff like that. Like people aren't getting too caught up in like I mean, it's the next generation. Like it means even less to the next gener the even the like generation that's coming up now. So I think that is a beautiful representation of the world in that capacity. But yeah, that's like, I mean, it's one, once again, it becomes that thing where it's like, eventually that's not going to matter. It's like sexuality or ethnicity, like that's never going to be important. I mean, I even love them busting Jordan's ball. Andre be like, oh, it's a, it's a black thing, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's a black thing. It's like, no, it's, don't make it into, it, it's kind of that. But it, like I said, it was, it was Jordan's own personal hang up. But, um, but that's also my point too, was like, yeah, like Jordan, when they were with that dude, they were girls. So which doesn't mean like, oh, like I, I just enjoy sex in this situation. I mean, who who knows what their circumstances could have been, like whether or not Jordan was ever a guy with that person or not. So that so it's, once again, it's just such an interesting thing of like exploring that sexuality situation and discovering a part of yourself and wanting to kind of have someone accept all of you and just, like having it presented in the way it has been just like, you know, stringing, like not stringing you along, but like adding like little nuggets along the way of like this larger conversation. That is something that's kind of troubling Jordan. So it's just really, really interesting on that front. Um, we're diving more and more into Marie's abilities. Um, I didn't talk about it all last uh, at all last episode because I heard other people talk about it. Like, right, I meant to talk about it. it. Was like right up until now, Marie's only controlled blood that was she could physically see, like her own blood or anyone else's, right? But now it is to the point, like the cock splo- cock explosion from last episode, that she has control. Like she can full on blood bend because I'm going by like Avatar: The Last Airbender because I didn't see a lot of core, so I don't know how blood bending involved or whether it always stayed like oh if it's in your body like you control the person's body marie's getting to that point she was able to control the blood in rufus's penis and once again cock explosion but now it's like right she's able to kind of sense more stuff like oh sam showed up it's like yeah he's got someone else's blood on his fingernails and it's like can you tell when my like my period's gonna start and she's like no emma friday because she's like, okay thanks because she had lost track like she was she like little by little she's gaining better control of her powers and it's just they're growing exponentially because now it's like little things like that even to the point like later on she's feeling her neck she's like feels like there's a clot here and i was like is that going to be a tracker i mean i guess like maybe it's specifically this core group that's getting tracked but we know like obviously like heroes get tracked because the seven get tracked because there was a whole thing about annie having her tracker cut out of her um in season two so what I think is so interesting is she noticed it about Jordan, but she didn't notice it about Emma. So maybe it is like a, just a top five situation because, well, Marie's number two, Jordan's five, and Andre's number one. So we didn't really get it with Andre. We do know that uh, Emma is going up the ranking. She's in, at 88 now because of all of this. So obviously, like, you know, shifting things, that ended up, you know, being a conversation of whether or not she'll go on the more giant, giant side of things with her content. But she's like, nah, I'm, you know... I, I'm I'm happy about it just because F my mom because she's the one that was telling me never to do that again. She even said like, oh yeah, you can Google the, the whole incident um, about that happening. But yeah. But the moment she started remembering Sam, well, she didn't remember Sam. It's just she found her shirt from the, um, that was it Stardust place that they were at, that arcade or whatever. It's like because of that, um, he ended up, she ended up being like, right, everything he was saying was real, so she went to go and track him down, um, which, really quickly, I love the thing about the, bo- uh, because, I think because The Boys has been going on for three seasons now, and obviously season three was kind of balls to all certain things, I think Gen V is like, well, we can get a little crazy too, like, we do, because at least The Boys, The Boys always was crazy, but they built up to their crazy, and you know, but Gen V's able to kind of just start from his crazy, because it's like, nah, this audience is used to it by now, so we've already shown, once again, I had brought up with, especially the cock explosion, it's like, well, we've already built up, like, right, we've already shown how far we can push this, let's see if we can push this a little further, you know, with stuff, so, but, like, the wackiness in this show, if, like, 
especially this stuff with Sam, because it's like, right, he sees the whole puppet thing, and it's like, okay, so is that his way, his mind's way to compartmentalize and make sense of everything? Is that his coping mechanism, or like, is that a coping mechanism he created, or is that just how his mind is doing that automatically with the whole puppet thing? Because then he sees like. Uh, an Emma puppet and then he becomes a puppet I'm like what's going on and then they proceed to have a whole puppet scene where people are getting ripped to pieces and the guy's like I, I'm a single father I have two daughters one named Haley and like like one guy his arm gets bro- ripped uh, ripped off broken and shoved in his mouth and it's like Sam is just tearing these people to pieces and I love that it's a puppet but it's like first person puppet mode it's wild. Even the guy that's on the rope being torn in half, it's like, uh, uh, it's just like, Jesus. And then you see the aftermath of it live action. But my point is that I think they are willing to take a lot of risk in some of these capacities because, because I think it's almost supposed to mirror a little bit like how last season we had that section in episode seven, the uh, Black Noir episode where we learned about his past with Soldier Boy and Payback, how they, um, how that whole sequence was animated. And that was hit. I mean, that was his coping mechanism, which I'm like, I do think that's kind of interesting that Sam's coping mechanism ends up being puppets and Black Noir's is based on animated like animals, like almost like Who Framed Roger Rabbit style type of stuff. But it's like they're both traumatized and basically kind of regressed. And this was like their coping mechanisms of dealing with things. But I also want to also throw it in there too. It's like, well, because when you look at the creative team behind this, like obviously the main, one of the main creative forces behind this show is Eric Kripke, who came from Supernatural. Like Supernatural was weird in the time he ran it, but obviously, because like, because like it's, I don't know. I don't think Eric Kripke was involved with Supernatural past season five, was he? I don't think he was. Because I know he was a showrunner from like season one to five, but I, I know like after that, like Sarah Gamble took over, so on and so forth. So I'm like, for like, I know she took over for like two seasons, but yeah, I, 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 because I, I'm trying to think, because like early Supernatural had weird stuff, but I feel like obviously the show gets even weirder. Like one of my favorite things in Supernatural history was a much later Supernatural thing, and and if you're unaware, Supernatural had a full blown Scooby Doo crossover episode. It was animated and everything so that's where i'm kind of like like this kind of stems from like the supernatural world it's not just the boys it's like right some of the creative forces behind this did some weird stuff in super i'm I'm sure kripke was a part of a lot of the weird stuff and i'm sure i'm just i'm not remembering off the top of my head but i'm sure there's like plenty of weird stuff back in those early seasons of supernatural you could like um point to um but also like right seth and evan are executive producers who they've also executive produced a lot of weird shit. Hey, like another weirdo comic book adaptation, Preacher. So it's kind of like, yeah, like when you're going to go balls to the wall with some stuff, you're going to go balls to the wall. But like I said, I think this is more so stemming from like most likely from the boys being weird that you can like bring some of that weirdness here. But like, I love that you, the fact is you even had that whole sequence. Uh, I'm trying to even think off the top of my head, like, did Supernatural ever have, like, a puppet situation? I feel like they did, but I might be conflating, because I know, like, Legends of Tomorrow definitely did, had a whole puppet situation. Oh, no, am I thinking, because I know Doom Patrol did, speaking of, because uh, the, the last half of the season is, um, uh, started airing, but I was like, oh, God, was, I know Doom Patrol did, but I'm trying to think, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, because uh, I know Angel did. I'm trying to. I'm now listing off all the shows I know that has something to deal with, like some puppet-related storyline episodes or one-off things. Either way, that was interesting. So as so Emma ended up tracking down Sam once again. He's not in the best state, um, and at the same time, Marie went to go see uh, Kate. And it turns out the one behind all of this, the mind, mind wipe, was Kate. I brought it up last episode. I, I need to deep dive into this. I thought Kate was suspicious. I kept being like, because like I said, so I'd listened, heard someone be like, oh, Kate seems a little weird, but they kind of dropped it. But now I'm like, because this is also, I oh got, like I said, my mind's going in a million miles an hour. Okay. Calm down, Michael, and break, break down my thought process. The timeline stuff never made sense to me because season two wasn't like three years ago. The Homelander stuff, 
like maybe they're slapping on it to being like, oh yeah, it's actually been another year. So I was like, still that would have been like maybe two years ago. So that's why I was like three years ago. So I was like, okay. So could it be that um, when they went to see Sam at Sage Grove like three years ago and the whole conversation of, oh, our parents made us like uh, with Compound V that they implanted us with that with children, maybe they found out and Kate wiped their memories because she was asked to. Um, so maybe that explains, because I was like, right, like the world didn't publicly know about Compound V until, episode, until season two uh, when that came out. But like I said, that doesn't seem, maybe, maybe timeline-wise it does add up of like, it was like three years ago, but I feel like it should at most be two. So that's why I'm like, was that like a year before uh, season two of the boys happened. Like, could that be what that was? And they're just saying three years ago because they're trying to screw your head, screw with your head because of the timeline. Or is that just them being accurate of like, no, it actually has been three. You know, that that's what I'm, I'm wondering. Like, cause like some of the timeline stuff feels like it doesn't fully add up in some capacity. But once again, that could easily just be me overthinking things. Uh, but, but aside from all of that, I brought it up last episode. Emma kind of was like weird to me. Not Emma. Um, Kate. I, the reason why I started being suspicious of Kate. Because what? Like they're fighting Sam. And they finally calm him down. And then all of a sudden mid-sentence. Everything goes black. And then like whoa. Uh, Marie wakes up with uh, Jordan in bed. Right? But the thing is like. I brought it up. The only person we didn't really ke keep track of. That entire situation. Was Kate. Kate, because the last time I remember them really focusing on Kate was when um, Sam was like, stay away from me. Now, in retrospect, it makes sense why he was so freaked out about her in particular. Because we thought, like, oh, you correlated, and they they do this to uh, the red herring and everything, because you associate with, like, right, one of his previous experiences with her was, right, when he was kind of wilding out, she, like, told him to go to sleep. But it's like, yeah, he's raged up right now, so he doesn't want her to try and do that. But now in retrospect, well, what we find out, it's like, oh, he actively knows that she's making people forget stuff. He knows that. So now part of me wonders, is that something he ended up finding out years ago? Because he's like, because he says, my brother was always made to forget by her. So it's like, she was always making him forget you? Now, now it makes, I guess... I guess eventually something would always trigger it to make him remember... Sam and so they needed Sam to be an experiment so to make it easier they just made him believe oh Sam killed himself that was just the easier lie because that way like that trauma would bury all of it because that was also the thing that was the other element to it because now in retrospect I was like right the way that the way that Luke was going about remembering it's like little by little it's almost like repressed memory so it's like was it trauma that buried him or was it his memory coming through because of like was Kate's like we don't know how long her compulsion can fully last like it, it does have its limits because eventually Rufus was able to break free of it obviously but like how long does it last. And so, like, does she have to re-up it every once in a while? And does she not realize he would... Well, because she knew he was having nightmares, but that's all they were to him. And so maybe those nightmares were his, his brain trying to tell him, like, yo, Kate's messing with you. She's, like, burying these memories. Because I had also brought it up last episode, too. Anytime he ever saw Sam, it was a little kid version of Sam. I'm like, why isn't it like, because it's like, right, you saw Sam three years ago and he didn't look like that. So why are you only seeing, a, is that just his mind? I was like, because I felt like, it's like, is that just an inconsistency? But I felt like that had to be on purpose. It, that had to, because I was like, because my thing was like, were they trying to hide the fact is, right, they didn't want you to know at that time, the guy who escaped that Andre Marie helped was Sam, his brother. So... I thought that was it, or once again, maybe it's just a trauma thing that he manifested his brother as a younger version of himself back before, like, maybe his powers came into being, and maybe even before his mind became fractured like it is, so. Like, there were just some things about Kate that kind of felt weird, and I was just kind of being suspicious of her, so I wasn't too surprised when it turns out she's the one behind wiping everyone's memories. I mean, the sad thing is Marie went to go see her about the, the, um the tracker and then it's just like yeah she wipes your memory luckily jordan was there to be like yeah i know i said we were cool and 
Maria's like, you never said that to me. He's like, yeah, I did. It's like, what's, wait, what's going on? And assumed Rufus had gotten to her again. So, and then you have Kate going after, well, going with Andre, which they're watching the Mesmerizer. Which I'm like, hey! But you also have to be reminded, oh yeah, Butcher like super brutally murdered him in the first season. Uh, uh, poor, uh, poor Haley Joel Osment. But that used to be a show that all three of them, Luke, Andre, and Kate would like, watch and he'd commentate and they loved his commentary on it but you could tell that look in Kate's eyes like I want to run away like when Andre's like yeah we should get away from this she's like yeah we should you can tell the part of me almost expected her to tell Andre the truth and then wipe his memories you know it, it, it the Andre and Kate things even more effed up because for one um Andre said what was it in episode Two, I believe. No, it was episode three. That's like, he was like, you would never use your powers on me. And to find out not only was she using them on Luke, she was also using on him. Because he was like, no, th there's no way you'd ever do that. Because now it adds it adds more context to that scene too. Because now, what, what cause when she was thinking about when she, like, the Sage Grove situation three years ago when she went to, with Luke to see uh, Sam... That was a memory, and then she automatically, like, she suddenly woke up. So I think maybe her guilt was already eating away at her there. But then you also add in the, um, because like, cause that, she's kind of been gaslighting each and every one of them, even in this episode. But it's like, it's too many people to juggle. Luke was one thing, but now she's having to do it to Andre, Jordan, Marie, and Emma. Like, it's it's too much, like, juggle, not trying to juggle four people's memories, especially when they're trying to piece everything together. They won't fully let it go. But my thing is, because uh, another thing that had kind of got brought up, I think last episode, of ret I, I, brought, I thought about a retrospect, was that scene where Luke was like, oh, make me forget. But she was like, no, you need to deal with this. It's like, that was most likely after she probably made him believe that his brother, it's like, messed his memories up to be like, yeah, your brother killed himself. It's like, that was afterwards. And she's like, no, I think you need to go through this. It's like, once again, the gaslighting. And you can tell, like, she's not a bad person. She's doing what she believes is right. Because I'd almost wondered if she was Indira's daughter or something. Because, the, but like, the way, I think Indira probably was telling the truth when she said her daughter died. But because... Kate believes that she is the one. She She's not doing this to be like, oh, bitchy and being mean. It's like, no, she's doing this because she believes that she's protecting each and every one of them. So They were going after Rufus. I mean, even to the point, like, Jordan was about to beat up on Rufus. And then Andre shows up and was ready to kill him until they told him, like, it was Kate. And Kate was there. And it's like, wait, tell me that's not the case. And she made Andre remember anything. And for him, it's like, you're you're a monster. That ties into the episode. Because it's like, was it? Uh, I think the episode title is like, Welcome to the Monsters Club or something like that. Um, and poor, like I said, you see that look on Kate's face. She's not doing this out of malicious intent. She's being told to do this by Indira. And she's also being told like, okay, this is also your way to protect the people you care about. So it's just, it's just spun so far out of control. It's not what she wants to do anymore. She She's constantly lying to people. She's manipulating the people she's come to care about. It's just, it's rough. So, well, also we have to wait to see where the next episode takes us with all of this. What answers we get, what we find out. Because eventually, like, she's not going to mess with their memories anymore, but she's going to have to keep up appearances with Indira. But also, like, none of that squad's going to trust her anymore because it's like, I think she legitimately was hurt by what happened with Luke because I don't think she, none of them expected things to turn out that way because that was the whole point to kind of sedate him and make him not remember his brother was alive. And so now it's like a, I think that's also what messes with Kate the most. It's like what, what eats away at her the most is the guilt of, I was gaslighting him for God knows how long, probably years. And, you know, I was messing with his head and he had no idea. It was already eating away at her. And now it's eating away at her even more. So it's like, once again, it's just showing you like, this isn't kind of like a full seven situation of like, a lot of them are terrible people. It's just a, like, these are people, these are young people put in these situations once again Vought will chew you up and spit you out it would it devours your soul once again to go back to like Maeve 
Maeve became the way she was because she gave away her soul a little at a time until there was nothing left. And it took going over the course of the three seasons of the show for her to get it back little by little thanks to Starlight or rather Annie. I'm just going to uh, toss this in somewhere, most likely at the very end of the recording, but I completely forgot that Emma made a reference to Tyrone Biggums when Marie was scratching her neck because that tracker or whatever was in her neck. And Emma was like, why are you scratching like Tyrone Biggums? I was like, what? The Chappelle Show reference in 2023? Hell yeah, dude. I'm all about it. Uh, if you're unaware, Tyrone Biggums is a character from The Chappelle Show back in the day. Uh, it's one of the characters Dave Chappelle would play. It, it's, essentially, he's just a crackhead, and just he would he would scratch a lot. You did that, that's just, you know, and the character would find himself in weird situations for the purposes of, well, getting crack or money for crack. But either way, it's just, I, I, I love that Emma dropped that reference. I was, that's so dope. Uh, so yeah, I just, I just wanted to add that in there because I completely forgot to talk about that, you know, so like just, just a lot of interesting things. I'm curious to see when the next episode takes us with, well, all of this, but really that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and good bye.